Hi, today I'm going to, before I, I put this tool away, I figured I'd come on and do a review and see if I can address some of the, the negative comments on the reviews and kind of put to light how you can overcome those issues. When you when you research this this out, this is a this is dovetail jig from Porter Cable. When you research it out, this is truly the best one that's out there. One of the simplest things you can do to relieve relieve a lot of frustration is don't try and cheap out and and get the cheap one and buy extra parts. Just get everything they have. Get the deluxe model. It'll save you a lot of hassle. Before we. Uh get into how all this works. Let's look at some of the projects this, this can do. This is a spice rack. Very difficult piece to do with a the total width of this has to match perfectly with the cabinet. You have to be pretty critical with measurements to do this. Through dovetails for the shells and for the rails. That's wormy maple and walnut paired together. Then we look at the other end of the island. This is through dovetails for the drawers. All the drawers were done out of quarter sawn red oak. Um, drawers end up being prettier than a lot of people's cabinets are. We not sure if we're going to put faces on these or not. Then from here, these are the drawers. Uh, finish assembled, ready for finish. All these are done with through dovetails. And the drawers are dadoed on all four sides instead of cut short on the back like they usually are. This is uh, one of the hardest pieces we put together. This is a pantry. Open shelves on the top, walnut rails on the front of the shelves, all through dovetail, sliding dovetail for the shelf construction up on top because those are going to remain open. We didn't want any nails in these cabinets. So this is quite a piece. This is looking at putting the shelves in right here. This is a bit difficult too. These are 17 and a half inch shelves. I got another video on how to do this and really stretch the possibilities of the way you use a jig. This is a close-up of putting one of those shelves in the uh, back of the pantry. You can see from the picture how tight these dovetails are. You've got to be real critical with your measurements to do this and we're going to go through explaining how you can do that inside of this video. So this should be a help for a lot of people. This right here is a one of our medicine cabinets we put together. We did one for a medicine cabinet, another one more for like a jewelry cabinet. Through dovetails for the corners, sliding dovetails for all the shelves. A lot of the work we did was without any nails at all. So, and this is a antique mirror on the on the face. This is what one of the medicine cabinet looks like before final assembly. This all the dovetail work you can see in the back with a dado out for the backs. So with this we'll get back into how you pull all this off, how you can do this with having perfect joints every time. When you look at the jigs, there's two basic jigs. This is the one for through dovetails. This right here is your dado making slot. This is for making your your tails that are going to slide in. <clears throat> Done a lot of work with this. Got some videos on how to stretch the limits of this and, and kind of sort of do the impossible. On the other side is your your, your template for, for doing your, your dovetails. This side over here is for your tails this side over here is for your pins. And there's a real easy way to to figure out what the difference is between tails and pins. If you look at this, your um, your your guide that goes under your your uh, 
router. Uh, it's going to slide in each one of these. When your material comes in from underneath, all of your tails are going to have a slot going straight through your material, but it'll flare as it goes out to the bottom. All of your pins, on the other hand, cut with a straight bit, will taper from the end of, uh, end of your, your material. And the difference your typical tails will look or actually sorry this is the pins. The pins will look like this. The tails will go the other way and they will taper I've got to cut some of those so I can show you. So when we start to set this up, it's critical to have the same size material that you're going to cut, made it to, up in here, to measure the height or the depth. Once you've measured that and set your, your router, after that you can use any depth material you want up here as, as waste so you don't so you don't mess up any of the, the critical material you have. So when we look at, at tools with it, you have one guide for your straight cut bit. Looks more like this. And the guide for tapered bit is much larger as you can see right here. In asking Porter Cable which routers are actually going to work, they say they can't tell you. So instead of going through that frustration, all you need is any router that will fit a plate like this right here. If it's going to fit a plate like this, it will work with the guides. If you have a big hole uh, I don't have my other router out here right now. But commonly if we look underneath, you can see the hole right here is much, much larger. As long as your base will fit a plate, it will work with the system. Right here is a height adjustment for your, your through joints. Over here is for your, your half joints. So, <coughs> It's important that all your materials cut square right here before you start off. These are height adjustments so you can make your clamping system work. And different heights, it'll, those will have to adjust down at different different rates. And you want it so that the height is, so when this comes over, it's not in the way of your router. So you can screw this down a little bit further. Doesn't lock so high, and now it's not in the way of the router. The one in the front, it comes up like this. It's critical to, to clamp a, a piece, uh, your receiving piece up here. Then you can push down, tighten up your clamps right there. So that gives you, you a height. And then the face right here, it's really critical for that to be touching the whole width along your template. So if you put it in, pull it up to the top, pull it tightly, then you can pull this over and lock it. Then you can loosen this, adjust your receiving piece so it's tight against the back. And then you have it basically set up to get your own. If you put your router in, into the slot, release this, gently drop your router down to the height, and lock it. Now you're going to be within the ballpark of the right depth. 
and I adjusted these very critically. You're going to be in the place to have the right depth for for cutting your your tails right here. Now, in looking at that, you need a few things to make this work. This is the most standard measuring tool that people use. It's called a tape measure. But this is a very critical, uh, very exacting tool and template system. And for those who are trying to get really refined work, which I'll show a bunch of pictures of some of the things that I've done, the tape measure is wholly inadequate for the measurement. The measurements are too big to make the adjustments you need to with your, your guide. So I really recommend getting one of these. It's called a veneer caliper. It's a machinist tool. It measures in thousandths of an inch. They're really easy to use. You have outside measurements on this side, inside measurements on this side, and depth measurements right there. You wipe your blades off, squeeze it together. There's always a dial on these. You dial that so that it's set at zero and you're good to go as far as that goes. This can give you really, really precise joints without slopping around, making all kinds of guesses about all kinds of different things. This saves a lot of time and a lot of the, the, the work that I did that I'll show you in a moment, those joints are put, put together so that the ends and the fit is within ten thousandths of an inch. A sixteenth of an inch is sixty-three thousandths of an inch. So it's a six of a sixteenth of an inch, which you can't measure that on a tape measure. You can measure very easily with a veneer caliper, and these aren't that expensive. You can pick these up on eBay for probably close to twenty-five bucks. It'll save you a lot of headache if you get those. Then we'll talk about marking systems. Most people use pencils with all of their work. <clears throat> I spent a fair amount of my life just being a Finnish carpenter and doing cabinet work, built furniture my whole life, still do cabinet work. And as you can see right here, I'm at a pretty big disadvantage. Starting life all over again, I don't have a shop, I'm stuck out in the outdoors, fair weather, put a, a canopy over the top of my workspace. So everything that I'm doing is temporary. It's the worst scenario you could have for working in. And I can still do absolutely, totally precise work. You don't need a great place to do things. But this is what most people use to, to mark with. It's called a pencil. The width of a pencil mark is bigger than the critical measurements you really want to deal with. So in refined finish work and cabinet work, most of your better carpenters, they use a knife, a knife blade. You can make a mark that's only five thousandths wide as compared to a pencil, might be a sixteenth of an inch wide. This allows you a lot more critical measurements in a lot of what you're doing. <coughs> So once you have all that set up, you'll always need ear protection. You always need eye protection. Those should go on before you turn any power things on. And while we're talking about measurements, if people's eyesight isn't really that good, and you know, mine used to be um, 10 20. Used to be. I don't know what it is anymore. If your eyesight isn't really good where you can see really refined detail, Go out and get yourself a pair of good reading glasses. You can sit at any any place uh, that has a stand up. They got mirrors right there. Find out what strength of reading glasses will allow you to see ultra fine detail. You want to be able to see a hair in pretty fine detail to make one of these work. So these, if your eyesight's not working really well, they'll save you a lot of headache. So you don't have to get a whole bunch extra if you get get the deluxe model with, with all of your templates and all of your 
your router heads. And that's really the difference between the cheap model and the more expensive model. You get all the bits that fit everything along with all the guides that fit everything rather than having to go through the headache and try and piece something out. Think you're going to save five dollars and you do not. You really won't. So <clears throat> that sets that up. We already set the, the height difference. Uh, height for this one right here. I'm going to go ahead and cut. Oh. Now we look at trying to set your work up on the, on the space right here. You always want to start off with half tails and let the pins make themselves however they're going to be with that. So to get half tails, it depends on where you set them in between your, your template guides right here. The way I have this set up right now it would start us off with no tails. So we've got to move this. You eyeball it so about the same amount of material extends off each side of one of the pins of the template. Lock it in with a guide. Then you take your vernier caliper right here. If you hook the edge like this. If you hook the edge of your material and measure to the edge of one of these pins right here, you can see what the difference is on each side and adjust that back and forth very critically. You should be able to get that within five thousandths, which is a tenth of a sixteenth of an inch. So if we, if we hook that on the lower pin on the lower side is the better place to measure. We measure coming in here. This is 391 thousandths. The, uh, you have tenths right here. And then, then the dial measures everything else. So that's 391 thousandths on that side. We flip it over, and that's 401 thousandths. So just eyeballing it, we got that board within 10 thousandths of an inch. And for the purposes of showing this, we'll, we'll accept that. If I was doing real critical work, I really want that myself within 5 thousandths. But this is within 10 thousandths side to side. That's way more critical than anyone will ever get with a tape measure. <coughs> So now I'm going to put on my ear protection, eye protection, grab some power. And I'm going to turn this on and we'll just cut, cut the pins on this, or the, the tails on this side. One critical thing when you when you cut both your pins and your tails, you want to make sure that you seat the guide or your router all the way into the back of the slot. If you don't go all the way, it won't won't cut everything. So now I can show you more easily the difference. These are pins. Notice they taper into the wood. Sorry, these are tails. They they taper into the wood. These are pins. They taper with the grain. So these taper against the grain. The tails taper against the grain. The pins taper with the grain. <clears throat> Already had this cut. Now we can see if these two will slide together. Oh. 
Okay, right here they do. We can see that they slide together fairly well. I'm going to show you what you do with a micrometer so you can adjust things. If we look at this joint right here, and we look at it from this way, right here you notice that this stalk sticks up against the ends of my tails, which means the height difference, the height measurement that I, I set the router up with was not correct. We can adjust that one of two ways. But this gives us a critical way to do it. If we put our depth side of the micrometer down here, or this is a vernier caliper, I'm sorry. We put the depth gauge and we, we roll the thumb down like this to push that down. We can come over this side and you notice that it's sticking out 50 thousandths. So 50 thousandths is almost a sixteenth of an inch deeper that we want to make this. So there's two ways to adjust that. I'm going to show you the way that I do it. We can either measure down here what the height is to our stop. Loosen this nut and drop that that stop down fifty thousandths of an inch, or we can measure the depth right here of how far this cutter sticks above our guide. That's seven hundred and seventy-two thousandths. If I wanted to adjust this to make this work right, I would loosen my stop up, add 50 thousandths to this, which would be 820 thousandths, loosen my lock, hold the router carefully, and I unplug this first, you should always do that before you adjust things. I gently move that down so that my height of the cutting part of, of the router bit that actually moved once I tightened it. So that comes down in seats perfectly when this measuring part is square. Lock it down and now I've adjusted to make the depth of my tails equal the depth of this material. The reason why this is different, this is a different material. This is a different material than I used for for the base right here. I didn't measure what, what the difference is. So that's how we change the depth of the tails. Then if we want to do the same thing for the pins, we make sure it's seated all the way, square the joint up so that it's even, stick our guide there, our depth measuring part of the vernier caliper, seat it against the wood, just like this, roll it down, and we find there's 18 thousandths difference. So we would want to make this 18 thousandths more. We would adjust the height of the other guide, the straight one, with, with the template moved around <clears throat> to do the same thing and we can have that exact. I like to have my, my pen sticking out about ten thousandths because then you can easily belt sand this off without burning the ends and have a really refined finished product. When you're doing the through dados 
using using this template right here it's really a good idea to use your vernier caliper on your on your face piece here so we'll set that up Take this template off. You're really better off putting your whatever width board, you're better off putting one on both sides so you make sure that it's flat. And what I did is I, I put the uh, the tongue side of the uh, the template out because that's the one that's really critical. If we put our our block up here, once again, even with it with the surface, we want to measure. It's good to put one on each side, tighten this up so you can get the bar tight, and you can also get this guide straight and you can measure from your depth gauge from the edge of the wood outside edge of the wood to your depth gauge right here before you make a cut that's 240 thousandths you want to make sure that the guide is set up the same same depth on both ends that's why it's good you take this, measure the width of your wood, because even with a good planer, it's going to vary quite a bit, and humidity makes things swell and change quite a bit. So you set that up on both sides, <coughs> right here. Then when you go ahead and make your first cut, <coughs> you can come and look at a piece like this. You can measure the width. Of your cut on the, on the very inside, you can measure the width close to the outside right here, and adjust that by moving your board in and out. When you make your first cut, if this doesn't fit, you measure here, measure there, go inside your slot, use these two measurements right here and whatever the difference is you split it in two say it's it's a hundred thousandths off you split that into fifty thousandths and you would move this guide fifty thousandths and you're going to be pretty close to right on the money the first time you do it something that will help with that on these brass rings right here that adjust your width right there once you get it so it's even on both sides one time, get a sharpie, put a mark someplace where you can see it. So if we go straight horizontally on this one, straight horizontally on that one, that way you can move it in and out. You can see how much movement you've needed to do on one side. Once you get it right, you can screw the other one, save yourself a lot of hassle. So, with those few things, you can take this and really do the impossible. I've, I've, uh, got a video that shows you how to take this jig right here. It only allows you 12, 12 inch cuts. I use this jig to make really fancy, uh, dovetail dado, uh, shelves going in, into some pretty fancy cabinets that are 17 inches deep or deeper than that. And that's really a difficult thing. You know, I go through another video on how to do that. But those few things will save you so much hassle. This right here is absolutely totally invaluable to really use this tool. So <clears throat> really give this thing a thumbs up. Anybody who's really struggling with using one of these and setting them up, 
that should help them out. That should overcome all of their difficulties. And <clears throat> you're going to find that this is an absolutely amazing piece of equipment. So if you like this, hit the like button down below. You can look through our channel. We've got a, a bunch of videos on all kinds of subjects, several of them on how to do very critical things with this. But figured I'd put a review out there before I put this machine away. So thanks. Have a great day.